After one of the greatest plays in NFL postseason history, the Minnesota Vikings seemed like a team of destiny. They were going to host the first home Super Bowl game in NFL history. They come on the road against the number one seed Philadelphia Eagles and put up seven points with ease on their opening drive. They were going to sleep well knowing that they had a home game coming up in two weeks. Then the rest of the game unfolded and you realize not that the Eagles were the team of destiny, more so that the Eagles are probably the most talented team in the NFL this season. And that's why they will be going to Minnesota to play in the Super Bowl against the New England Patriots. As you watch the game, the number of key contributors on this team, on the defensive line, on the offensive line, in the secondary, the running back committee, wide receivers, and the quarterback, Nick Foles. Nick Foles played a really good game. He got into rhythm in the second half of that Falcons game to the divisional round, and it carried over tonight. Now there weren't 20 mile per hour wins, and Foles played really good. And from top to bottom, 53 man roster, the Eagles, they would, a lot of people would say, had the most talent, especially after this game, had the most talent. And they've had injuries this year. They've had to survive injuries. And that narrative all starts at the quarterback position with depth, with injuries, because Nick Foles is not supposed to be the quarterback for the Eagles that's leading them to the Super Bowl. Carson Wentz is supposed to be that guy, and he tore his ACL. The season was supposed to be over for the Eagles after that. I even thought the Eagles were done. I thought there were a couple teams in the NFC that could take this team on when Carson Wentz went down. And the Eagles have lost a number of other players, key players to injuries like Jason Peters, Jordan Hicks, even Darren Sproles went down with season ending injuries. But, you know, when you have as much depth as this Eagles team, you can just plug in the next guy, move on and win games. And that's what they proved today. That's what they proved all season long. That's a testament to the GM and not just because of good drafting and stuff like that. Just this year alone, the amount of different players that they've added to this team that weren't on last year that have been key contributors, like Chris Long, like Derek Barnett, the first round draft pick, who they drafted with a pick from trading Sam Bradford to the Minnesota Vikings, by the way. Then you got Jay Ajayi they traded for, like Garrett Blunt they signed in the offseason, and Nick Foles. He wasn't on this team last year. Nick Foles, free agent. They just picked him up and said, hey, play backup quarterback. You're probably not going to come in because Carson Wentz is our guy. And all of a sudden, Carson Wentz goes down. Nick Foles is in. And the Eagles ran the Vikings out of the building tonight. This is a really impressive game. There were two really key first half turnovers that made the first half score look more lopsided than it should have been because the Vikings had a pick six from Case Keenum after he was hit by Chris Long. That was you know, probably not going to be a pick six if Keenum gets a clean pocket there. And then the one forced fumble by Derek Barnett when he came in unblocked. That was just a blown protection. Some weird protection where the tight end was supposed to block at the defensive end, which coming across the body. It was just some weird thing that was just not that smart. And I just thought the bottom. Despite all those turnovers, because that wasn't field goal range. That's like 10 free points that the Eagles dodged right there. But still, the Eagles play like the better team. They looked like they had the better coaching staff and the GM side of thing. They just had the better roster. So they deserve this win. They will be going to the Super Bowl. The Vikings, it kind of felt like maybe they should have not won that game. Not like, you know, the, or the Saints would have given a better game. They probably would have, but... It just felt like, huh, maybe the Saints were the better team. It's just the Vikings might have gone pretty lucky on that last play. And that that's what I kind of think after seeing that. But at the same time, would they have won against the Eagles? Who knows? The Eagles played really well. I even thought, you know, the Eagles, like I said, I thought the Eagles would have been done after Carson Wentz went down. I thought the Falcons would win that divisional round game. They almost did. They almost did. They came really close, but they didn't. The Eagles hung on. They made some great plays throughout. When Carson Wentz went down, they won that big game against the Raiders. They were able to beat the Giants when Nick Foles playing well. Then in the playoffs, they withstand the Falcons. They dominate the Vikings. And now they book a trip with the New England Patriots. Congratulations, you're going to the Super Bowl and you get to play against Tom Brady. It's going to be a really good matchup of best team versus best player, which is Eagles best team, Tom Brady best player. And <laughs> it should be a pretty good matchup on paper. Should be a close game. We thought this Eagles and Vikings game would be a good game. But what do we know? You know, just <laughs> any given Sunday, right? Any given Sunday. And on this particular Sunday, the Eagles just came out and executed. They just, their offense was flowing well, whether it's running, passing, run pass option, anything. Dub, the amount of double moves they hit on the Vikings. The Vikings defense, really good defense, man. They were the number one defense in the NFL, according to the numbers this year. And... 
they just it, it was a couple of really close games like our couple of really close plays like when Nick Foles threw the touchdown to Alshon Jeffrey he came really close to losing that football Everson Griffin I believe there was someone else in there who was poking at him and Nick Foles just somehow hung in the pocket kept the ball and then you think of plays like where Case Keenum fumbled the ball where he wasn't able to hang on those kind of plays can make differences in the NFL and can really change the score of a game. The Eagles just had a lot more of those plays go their way. But at the same time, the reason why the Vikings didn't have some of those plays go their way is because of the fact that they didn't execute the play properly. So it's not that the Eagles got lucky. It's just that they were able to make more 50-50 plays. And the team that makes more 50-50 plays will win the majority of games in any sport. In basketball and hockey and anything right so the Eagles made more of those plays they win the game and it's like I said it's just a really talented team and I'm looking forward to the Super Bowl because you know we'll see how Belichick and Patricia and those guys are able to game plan against this Eagles scheme because the one thing that makes the Eagles so deadly on offense is that what you see is not what you're actually going to get and what I say by that is they come out in a formation but you really don't know what's going to happen. A lot of times they just audible the formation, come out on something different. You know, they got the run pass option that everyone's talking about. The amount of different run plays. They can run, you know, a couple of zone reads and stuff like that. There's just so many different elements to the Eagles offense that makes it so hard to guard. So, you got a game plan, game plan against that. And then on the other side of the ball, the Eagles front is just so, so, so juiced up. You got Fletcher Cox in there that you... Pretty much half the double team roles he's going to dominate. Brandon Graham's another guy that pretty much demands double teams. And then you got Chris Long, Derek Barnett outside. You got Kendricks. You got Bradham. And then in the secondary, Malcolm Jenkins is the X Factor. McLeod's having a good season. Patrick Robinson's having a great season. So there's just so many guys you got a game plan against. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how the Patriots game plan for that because you know they're going to find a way. The Patriots will to not get blown out like the Vikings did. So. What will they do? We'll just have to wait and find out. Meanwhile, for the Eagles, you know they want to rely on that front seven to rattle Tom Brady. That's always the game plan against Tom Brady. Rattle him, make him feel uncomfortable, and then slow the pace down the game. And the Eagles have the team to slow down the pace against the Patriots because what you want to do is keep Tom Brady off the field. And the Eagles are one of the best third down conversion teams in the NFL this season. Especially with Carson Wentz out there. Even with Foles. They were converting a lot of crazy third downs in that game against the Vikings alone. So, if they could do that against the Patriots, then the Eagles had the formula. They had the formula to beat the Patriots. It's just, you, <laughs> Tom Brady's that dude. Tom Brady is that dude. So, and uh, by the way, we're just blowing out this dude. Kind of like the Eagles did against the Vikings. Tonight, we are just having our way with our poor opponent up 27-0 to right now. Game was slow pace at the start where we weren't really able to put up points on the board. But once the floodgates opened on this one, they really opened up. And for the Vikings, meanwhile, their outlook is that they're probably going to have Sam Bradford at the quarterback position because Case Keenum's a free agent. It's going to be demanding more money than the Vikings want to give with Sam Bradford under contract. They are going to lose Pat Shermer, their offensive coordinator. He's supposed to be going to the New York Giants as their new head coach. Mike Zimmer's still going to be around. They got a lot of young pieces on that defense still, and they should still be a factor. But the one problem for the Minnesota Vikings is that the NFC North's still looking pretty decent. You got the Lions in there that any year could turn up and battle for a wild card spot. And then the Packers should have Aaron Rodgers back. And if Aaron Rodgers is healthy, they're still the favorites to win the NFC North no matter how much talent this Vikings team has so once again I mentioned with the Jaguars you don't want to miss your opportunity the window of opportunity in the NFL is so little even as talented as a team as you had this year it could all change next year and you might not even make the playoffs you could just straight up miss the playoffs next year still with a good team but you could go just nine and seven have some unfortunate breaks and not even make playoffs and you're just thinking damn I wish we won that NFC championship game so hopefully it's not like that for the Vikings but We'll just have to wait and see. They still have a lot of young receivers on the offensive side, too. They got Diggs. They got Rudolph. They got Thielen and those guys. So they should get Dalvin Cook back next year, which should be a big part of their offense. Really big part because he was playing really good before he went down. So the Vikings definitely still have the talent. They're still a good team. You wouldn't expect a crazy follow-off. But like I said, at the same time, just any given Sunday, you never know. The Eagles are capitalizing because the Eagles I feel like this is their year to capitalize on the amount of talent they had because next year's team probably won't be as good unless Carson Wentz is just lining it up again then you know anything can happen when you have a quarterback playing at a top five level 
But this is the Eagles' year, and they are capitalizing no matter what signs are telling them that they shouldn't make it all the way. No matter what injuries or whatever it may be, they are just finding ways to win the game. So, I mean, I, I still believe that, like, not only just the Eagles team, but their coaching staff has been doing real good this season because Doug Peterson has been calling some great games. Like I said, they got this really funky offense. Then on the defensive side of the ball, they got Jim Schwartz, the former Lions head coach, one of the better defensive minds out there in the NFL. And not only that, they have some of Chip Kelly stuff out here. They're still running some of Chip Kelly's offense. And Chip Kelly's offense was still pretty good. They just kept on running hard up every single play. But otherwise, Chip Kelly's offense, it wasn't like it didn't work. It was still pretty good, and they are mixing in some of Chip Kelly stuff with some normal NFL stuff. And this is what you're seeing on paper right now. Just not a 55-0 to zero game like we have right now, but something kind of like that against the Vikings. So, you know, all in all, the NFL playoffs this year leading up to the Super Bowl have been pretty good. We've had some pretty good matchups. The Jaguars have been in some really good games, like the, you know, the Steelers and the Patriots ones. You think about the Eagles and Falcons game. There's a lot of really good games this year. So I was really looking forward to the NFL playoffs this year. At the end of the day, it's one seed versus one seed. So on paper, it's just like, oh, the teams that were supposed to make it made it. But at the same time, there's still some really good games. I'm sure, like, I figured the pa it was either Patriots were going to make it or we're going to be shocked that someone else made it out of the AFC. And the Patriots still made it. And the a AFC, for the most part, wasn't really the funnest conference. But the NFC was really wide open. It's just that, you know, a couple of plays change everything when you think about both divisional round games the saints barely missing out the falcons barely missing out you think about the week before that the panthers barely missed out the chiefs barely missed out so yeah good games in the playoffs we'll see how the super bowl can deliver more of the same for the most part that will be it for this video though if you guys have any thoughts on the eagles domination what you guys think about the super bowl matchup against the patriots who you guys got i'm not ready to make a super bowl prediction yet i'm gonna hold off on that we gotta see what happens um, Gronk should be back for the Super Bowl. He's concussed right now. He's gonna have two weeks to recover So hopefully we get to see Gronkowski healthy for that Super Bowl and both teams at as much full strength as they could possibly be at this point So yeah, I'm gonna hold off on that you guys can do whatever you want in the comment section make any predictions Whatever it may be. I'll try to reply to as many of you guys as I can Leave a like in this video if you guys enjoyed it subscribe for more Madden 18 gameplays this is going to cause a, cause a rage grip, by the way. A missed field goal return touchdown. My opponent had enough at this point. So, yeah, we're watching the video. If you guys enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you guys next time.